Good. Let's try it from the top down. Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Now if I go slowly, will you try to stay with me? Okay. Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Again. Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Very good. The next verse is difficult. Ve'ahavta et Adonai Elohecha, behold, levav ha'uvahol nafshecha, uvahol me'odecha. That's much more difficult, but it says, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. But I won't, I won't labor you with that one. We'll just stick with the Shema. Shema means hearken to, hear, is what it means. So when it begins, it's saying, hearken, Israel, hear, Israel, listen to. That's what the Shema is all about, that there is only one God, and it is a mainstream truth. So, in this particular lesson, you must have a major anchor. So we will go to the major mainstream truth. The major mainstream truth begins here about the oneness of God in Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 4. Deuteronomy 6 and 4. <clears throat> and what we're going to do is tonight, we're going to chain reference all of these scriptures through your Bible. So if you can remember Deuteronomy 6, 4, then under every verse thereafter, it will tell you the next verse to go to. So if you're in public witnessing to someone and you've got your Bible, if you can just remember Deuteronomy 6, 4, you can just go through the entire Bible, just proving one verse after another, the one that's, they'll think you're brilliant. Just tip your Bible so they don't see that the writings you've got under the verses. <clears throat> I, I am delighted to, uh, to do all of this. Do you like this? Thank God. So here in Deuteron Deuteronomy 6 and 4, <clears throat> the Bible says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Underscore that. And under that verse, write Deuteronomy 32, 39. and then turn to Deuteronomy 32 and 29, or This verse says here, See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive, I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. Under that verse, right in there, Luke 10.22. Luke 10.22. And then turn in your Bible to Luke chapter 10 and verse 22. There's a very interesting statement made here. In Luke 10, 22, Jesus is speaking. He says, All things are delivered to me of my Father, and no man knoweth who the Son is but the Father, and who the Father is but the Son, and to, and to whom the Son will reveal him. Put a circle around the word reveal. And who the Father is but the Son, and he to whom the Son will reveal him. Right under that verse, Matthew eleven twenty seven, and turn to Matthew eleven twenty seven. Matthew 11:27 says, 
And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. Uh, I'm sorry. 11.27. That's 12. <clears throat> All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Remember I taught you last night in the, in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established? Here are two verses, very interestingly, that say exactly the same thing. It's really a revelation. It's something that God helps you to understand. Powerful. Next to verse 27, write John 4 and 24. John 4, 24, and turn to the Gospel of John, chapter 4 and 24. John 4.24 says, <clears throat> Jesus speaking, God is a spirit. Everyone say spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Right under that verse, Genesis 1.2. And turn to the book of Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2. The Bible says here in the Gospel of John, Jesus speaking, that God is a spirit. That is confirmed again here in Genesis 1-2. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God, everyone say Spirit of God, moved upon the face of the waters. Under that particular verse 2, write Genesis 1-26, and then go to verse 26. Here, in verse 26, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over the earth, etc., etc. Now, in this verse of Scripture, when God said, Let us make man in our image, the Trinity world tries to say that God there is Elohim, which is the plurality of God's sum total assets and powers. So they try to say that's proof that uh, there's more than one in the Godhead. That's not what the, what the scripture is saying here. When God said, and let us make man in our image, he is speaking in what is called the plural of majesty. In other words, he was speaking in the sum total of his power and assets. This has been done for centuries and centuries by sovereigns all over the world. Queen Elizabeth, when she addresses the nation, speaks in the pearl of majesty. She uses the pearl form, we, us. But she's really speaking for self and alone. The king of Thailand also does this, even in this hour. He speaks, when he speaks to the nation, he speaks in the pearl of majesty, using us and we. But... He's really speaking as a single sovereign entity. So it's what grammarians call the pearl of majesty. God here was speaking in the sum total of his power and assets. To prove that, if you go now to the next verse, <clears throat> even though he says, let us make man in our own image in verse 26, in verse 27, look at this, underscore this. So God created man in his not their image, but his. It's singular. Put a circle around his image. And in the image of God created he, not they, he. Put a circle around the word he, him. Male and female created he. Put a circle around he, them. Then if you go to verse 29, and God said, behold, I, not we, I, put a circle around the word I, have given you every herb bearing seed, etc. Then in verse 30, 
toward the end of that verse, he says, I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. Put a circle around the word I there. Then if you look at verse 31, and God saw everything that he, not they, he, put a circle around the word he had made, and behold, it was very good, and the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Uh, and then verse 2 of chapter 2, and on the seventh day God ended his work, his work, not their work, which he, not they, had made, and he rested, not they rested. Then if you look at um, verse 8 in chapter 2, and the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he, put a circle around the word he, put the man whom he, singular, had formed. So even though God in verse 26 speaks in the sum total of his power and assets, the pearl of majesty, and uses the pearl form us, in every instance thereafter it is singular because there is only one God. Under verse 26, then write Malachi 2.10. Malachi 2.10. It's one of the minor prophets. Go to the book of Malachi 2.10. Once you study this thoroughly and get all of these things in your heart, it makes you very confident of who you are and what you have, and you don't feel intimidated by anyone else. And even if they reject what you're saying, the fact that you know it's true, you just have to understand this gospel only works on the hungry and the thirsty. It was never, never designed for the mocker nor the, nor the scoffer. It doesn't work on mockers and scoffers. It only works on the hungry and the thirsty. That's why you and I are here today. We were hungry for the things of God. We were thirsty for the things of God. And God filled us. Here in Malachi 2.10, here the prophet is saying, have we not all one Father? Hath not one God created us? Underscore in that verse, one Father and one God. And then, under verse 10, right in there, Romans 5, 14. Am I going too fast? Are you keeping up? I'll slow down just a bit. <clears throat> under verse 10, write Romans 5, 14 and then turn to Romans 5.14. This verse of Scripture is just a tremendous understanding. I became so excited when I first saw this and understood it. Here, <clears throat> Paul is writing to the church in Rome, and he says in Romans 5.14, Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the...